All right, friends. This is Ethan Allen Dresser. It is really dated. It's great as far as its structure, but it needs a new look. And we're going to give it something amazing. Lots of character, layers, depth, stencils. So let's jump into it. First, we're going to mix four different colors onto our palette. English Ivy is one of Dixie Belle's newer colors. Gravel Road, Putty, and then we'll finish up with Hurricane Gray. These are just going to be the four colors I use in a very loose, wet uh, technique on this dresser. I'm going to pour in some water just to kind of keep it all nice and loose and runny. I want it all to kind of work together, kind of creating its own unique look. With a, a misting bottle, I'm going to give it a, uh, probably a squirt bottle. I'm going to give it a good coat just so that the surface is really wet. I'm using Dixie Belle's Big Daddy brush to move that paint around very loosely because we're going to be using other techniques to create the effect. I'm not too worried about brush strokes, lines, or anything like that. You should be working very wet here, so make sure you're, you're not feeling any kind of dry brush effect. So that's why there's a lot of water in my butcher plant pan. And where I see a void, I'm going to add more color and just keep applying that until I'm happy with the overall look. I like how the green, green's peeking in there, some of the warm putty tones, the grays. I'm gonna go back with a little bit more water and then I'm gonna use a wet rag or a damp rag and just dab, creating texture, and lifting some of the paint. If I need it or as needed, go back and add some more color. You can always re use the rag over that section to continue that texture element. And that's what I'm gonna do. A little water, mist it up. The squirt bottle is so helpful for this technique. I do use this technique once in a while. I do have other videos with it if you'd like to see it used with different colors. I'll let that side go. It'll take a little bit of time to dry and uh, we'll come back to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and start on the front. The Big Daddy brush is so great because it allows me to cover a large surface quickly and also allows me to move that paint and blend, almost like blend it together so that it's not um, consistency of just one color overall. I've done projects where I've let the dark area be further towards the bottom and I've done lighter colors towards the top. That's kind of my goal here, but I didn't really force myself to abide by that too much. Just be random. If you want to do something that's just fun and doesn't really have uh, stringent rules on how you paint, this is a fun technique to do. You don't have to use the Big Daddy. You could use a chip brush or other brushes, but this one covers a large area quickly and allows me to get multiple colors on the brush. I will go through and pull out each drawer paint the top lip, if you will, and make sure that those all match. All right, we'll come back in there with the rag, start adding a little bit of texture, visual texture, not really anything raised that you can feel, just breaking up the brush strokes, adding a little depth to that. You can add as much of that as you like. Then I come back with the squirt bottle and usually just give it a little bit of a light squirt, just to add a little bit of water texture it leaves little spots i kind of like that look there I, you can see i was adding a little bit more color uh, the under color underneath everything was driftwood so that's going to show through and you could just see that on the side i was touching that up add a little bit more color coming back in with some more of the darker color because again i want the base to be a little bit darker than the top and that kind of gives it a good foundation overall this is just really uh, touching to taste, if you will. Spray, add paint, dab, until you're happy with where it's gonna be. I know I'm gonna be adding a lot of stencils to this piece, so I'm not worried about having a perfect paint look because I'm gonna cover a lot of it up with texture and uh, stencil, if you will. Do the last side, give it a good mist with water. You wanna work wet, dip into those four colors and brush that on. As much as paint as you'd like, but you shouldn't be adding so thick of a paint that it starts streaking down or it's really dry. 
Again, you can see I'm adding a little bit more of the darker color towards the bottom. Back and forth, up and down, whatever technique you want to use, because it's not going to really matter once you start dabbing with it and adding mist to it. And again, the more misting you add, the more drippy your paint will be. And you may love a really heavy, drippy look. Um, I like to be somewhere in the middle where it's slightly runny, but not too streaky, where I have lines going down the sides. And if you're dabbing with the rag, you're probably going to get rid of a lot of those extreme drips anyway. Now it's time to pick out what stencils I want to use. I pulled out several, but I eventually started leaning towards the more organic stencils as opposed to a stringent hard edge line. So we're just going to start using the same four colors that we did at the beginning. And I'm going to use a smaller brush as my stencil brush. And I'm just going to randomly add these colors throughout the sides, the fronts, over drawers. No specific guide other than just having a general, like, use it a little bit everywhere. So by the time I use all the stencils that I pick out, most of the dresser has a good amount of stencil to it. So just, I like to vignette it where you can't see any hard edges. So just kind of uh, random overall. And I'm dabbing into the paint, a little green, a little gray, a little cream, whatever you'd like. Maybe go a little darker towards the bottom since there's a lot of dark colors down there and maybe a little lighter towards the top, whatever works. This can be done on small projects, large projects, and it does probably help to have smaller stencils for smaller projects. But again, I'm using a lot of spaces or areas on the piece, just having a little bit of creative fun. You'll notice I'm just using my hands to hold the stencil still. You're, you can use tape if you'd like. Um, whatever works for you, really. Here's a side. Now you can see I've added several stencils already to this section. And everything from animal print to mud cloth now i'm using the tiles stencil Alright, on the front, I want to bring a little bit of attention to where all the knobs are going to go. So I'm going to use Dixie Bell's Copper Patina through the stencil, and I'm just going to dab using one of the artist brushes into the different areas of the stencil, creating a little bit more visual texture again. And then I'm going to squirt a little bit of water on there. I'm trying to just make it look a little worn and distressed overall. So randomly tapping through different parts of the stencil going across the front of the drawer. After adding a little bit of water to the copper patina, I do or did go back and dab it a little bit with a rag just to add a little bit more texture so it wasn't pure paint. So that does add a little bit of depth as well. For this step, I'm going to use a 220 grit sandpaper and just go over all the surfaces and give it a little bit of distressing so that none of the stencils and none of the paint look clean. I want it to feel rugged, worn, aged, and this gives it a more authentic look. I'm going to go back to the patina copper again. I'm going to use a chip brush and I'm going to add some faux distressing 
and just some accents overall. I'm not trying to paint this, I'm just lightly, lightly dragging it and hitting some surfaces, some edges, just adding some interest points. Maybe it's weathered, worn, distressed, but just kind of touching and just adding some interest. And I like that the bristles of the chip brush give me a little bit more of a varied, unrefined feel as opposed to a normal brush that Dixie Bill might have that has more bristles. So give it a try. You could use a uh, palette knife or a scraper for this if you want. It gives it some of the same look. I just like how the brush gave me a lot more of that characteristic I was looking for. You'll notice that for most of my technique, it's vertical and horizontal. Not too many angles or swishes or anything like that. Uh, again, I kind of feel like it gives it more of that uh, wind blown or things scraping. It just keeps it consistent overall. Here's a more close up look of how that might look. Apply as little or as much paint as you want. And it doesn't even have to be copper. I just thought that the copper kind of went well with the knobs and uh, gave it a little bit of a shine to, con to contrast the worn and rugged look. I had no idea when I recorded this part that I was recording in slow-mo. I have no idea how that happened, but it's kind of cool. But I'm using Dixie Belle's Colonial Black. I thought it went well with the color scheme overall that I had. It really doesn't look black as much because it does have a wood grain underneath but I did want something that was nice and dark as opposed to using the espresso stain which is a little darker. I just liked how this turned out and kind of kept it with the same look and overall feel that I was going for. like how this turned out once it's all dry I'm gonna give the entire piece a satin top coat and it just turned out so cool I think it's look, going to look great in maybe a man cave or maybe just kind of a cool bedroom but it definitely uh, helped to change the knobs out and I think the piece came together really well I loved all the stencil work the colors that I chose and it turned out fun That's the end of the show. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell before you go. Bye.